little feisty in this motherfucker. You did? And it's hot. You did what I was Feisty. But yeah, though, I got my boy Billy in this bitch. You know how it's going. You know he's probably a fucking white boy. This shit happening. It's going to happen every time. And it's not gonna stop happening. Oh yeah, we shot the um, feisty video. So I don't know if it'll be out before or after this comes out, but yeah, definitely be on the lookout. That's a that's a nice song, a nice little visual is gonna come out for it. And then definitely down the line with Ruga, you're gonna see more and more um, bigger projects from us and stuff like that. So this is shivertyson.com today. Today's guest uh, from Chicago, upcoming uh, one of the best uh, directors from uh, Chicago right now, Diddy. Oh, so my last name is pronounced Kauk. Kauk. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people ask me that. <laughs> I'm from, I grew up in the suburbs and I live in Chicago now. So I've always been around Chicago. This, the suburb I grew up in is like 15 minutes outside of the west side, so. Growing up, it was, I had a, a nice life growing up. I went to high school, middle school in Elmhurst. Um, I, we skateboarded a lot. I went to Bensonville Skate Park like most of my childhood and that's kind of like what got me into a lot of what I do now. Right now I use a Sony A7 III for like my um, lower level productions and then for like my higher end stuff I have a cinema camera, a Sony FS5 and um, I just recently got that. I'm trying to like incorporate that more into what I'm doing and more like bigger budget projects. Um, I mean, Sony's got some great lower level mirrorless DSLRs that are out and um, I think those are, they do a really nice job for budgets and stuff, like if you're on a budget to buy a camera. Um, my Really my recommendation is just, editing is really important, a lot of people don't really put that much emphasis on their computer, I think it's really important to have like a higher end computer and be able to do better edits and have plugins for your software than it is for a camera, especially depending on the type of productions you're doing and the budgets you're dealing with. So um, I really put like a higher emphasis on editing and stuff like that. And then, I mean, camera equipment, really, if you're going to start out, it's try to get in the groove with the right people and work with the right people and build your revenue and always work on like the number one thing you can always really do is just improve your equipment after that so it's like once you start off just keep on moving up upgrading and kind of like over the time you'll really accumulate everything you need um really how i started shooting music videos started from skateboarding actually and I when I was younger I, in like high school and middle school I would make skateboarding videos with me and my friends from uh, the neighborhood and stuff and then eventually one of my friends from high school asked me if I could make a music video for his brother and I made a couple of them like locally in the suburb that I lived and then um, it just kind of like moved further People started like people from Instagram started to contact me and want me to do videos for them. And like gradually, as time went on, I improved and everything kept on growing and growing. And then it got to the point that it's at now. Oh, my, I really listened to um, Three Six Mafia the most, probably. And then like even I liked a lot of punk rock stuff, um, like Iron Maiden and other stuff like that. I mean, I really kind of feel the same. Um, I'm just like, 
I feel like thing, like my productions have been more appreciated considering the numbers that I've I've gotten and the response that I've gotten and it's just like it's a good feeling to know that everything you're putting out is being uh, watched you know rather than like it kind of just sitting there um, so that's really been cool um, as far as that like you know more opportunities have come and they it's been a lot of fun like the last six months have been kind of have moved really fast and at times it's been stressful like trying to keep up with uh, all the business that's coming through and everything and um, yeah but it's really been other than that it's really been a blessing um, I can't complain about it The top one that I like that I like the most that I did was for um, FBG Dutchy and FBG Young. It's called my Duffel, and that was like my favorite one just because it, I don't know. It felt like the energy was right in that one, and it was like a really simple shoot. It was kind of quick, run and gun, but it came together really nice, and the edits were nice, and a lot of people liked that one. Even though it didn't get the response as good of a response as I thought it was gonna get, it still got a, a nice response. And then, like, another one, um, I mean, of course, I like, like, Exposing Me and Blickathon. Those are two, because I, I like, because they were, like, <clears throat> the ones that are the most um, popular and people recognize me for. So, like, that was cool. Um, and then I got, like, one project that coming out with, well, uh, I got one project coming out with my friend Marcus. And we've been we shot in like a couple of different cities that we've been work that we've been went to over the last year, and it's like a real nice project that's gonna come together eventually. Like we just got to get a couple more shots, but other than that, it's gonna be nice. Um, and then of course like the the Moon People video I did for Sicko Mob because that was like the first video that I did that went up that like the views went up pretty fast, and. Uh, yeah, that was, I feel like that was like a real turning point in uh, my career at that point. Um, I think right now, I think Chicago's got a, a big spotlight on it, and um, there's been a lot of bigger artists coming, like Cowboy and Polo G, and we're seeing like more of an industry reach with them. Um, as far as what we're missing, I think we're kind of missing people being consecutive and um, not really consecutive, but people. I think the thing that the artists are missing in Chicago is really once they reach a certain level of popularity, continuing to use that for their benefit and like get further with it. Um, where a lot of them like it seems like they plateau. Um, and I'd like to see more artists like in the mix with artists bigger like Meek Mill and stuff like that. As far as songs that are big from the city, I've been hearing more and more of this song, Heavy Steppers, um, and it's, it's been gaining popularity. I think that's going to be a song that gets kind of bigger, at least um, you'll see, you start hearing on the radio more. Um, Blickathon was pretty big for some months. I think that was like, I don't know. I don't really know how to answer that question all the way. As far as people I work with, I definitely think Duck's been building a little, a lot more momentum as of lately than he was like some months ago. Um, Ruga is definitely someone to look out for, and um, Trench Mob de has definitely been making bigger moves in these last couple months. So as far as people I worked with, they're like three people that are are that are 
growing um, and that I think have, I don't know, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Shit. Um, those are like three groups that I think people will be seeing more of in the future. Oh yeah, we shoot a video of awesome. It's getting real feisty in this motherfucker. You did? And it's hot. You did what I was so saying? Feisty. But yeah, though, I got my boy Billy in this bitch. You know how he's going. You know he's going to be a fucking white boy. This shit happening. It's going to happen every time. And it's not going to stop happening. I'm going to get real round bucks. I'm some gray. I'm getting real round bucks. Yeah, but no, though, for real, Billy one of the one of the best in the city. Fuck with him. All y'all ain't... Honestly, he's the best in the city to me. The best. Yeah. You should know you're out here, fucking white boy. Yeah. Yeah, I got a, I got a bad story, definitely. I mean, there's, there's a couple of them, but um, so one time it was like really late at night, and I was shooting a video for one of uh, for an artist named Fat Cow, and we were somewhere off 87 the cottage grove and all of a sudden like we were shooting outside of the front of, out out front of somebody's house and the police came around and i guess they were like kind of upset because it was too many people so they told us we can't be in the neighborhood and they told us to go to the park um so the park was like a block down and as we're walking to the park another police officer pulls us over and they're like what are you guys doing we told them they said go to the park so basically we were in this enclosed tennis court area and it was like, I want to say midnight and we start shooting the first scene for the video and it's probably, we're probably about one minute into the song and all of a sudden <clears throat> during the filming we got like nine shots fired at us and you can hear in the filming like them like zoop and zip by our head and it was like it was actually a really scary situation and then like it was like weird because we were enclosed in the <clears throat> we were enclosed in the fence and then like as soon as we ran it was like the police were already there with their guns drawn as soon as the shots were fired and then like they started asking us if we were shooting but we just got shot at and like that was probably like my craziest story while i was shooting a video I mean, I feel like, um, I don't really feel like I'm, I get treated any different. Um, sometimes people do maybe look at me different when I come into a situation, but then when they start to understand who I am and all that, I don't really feel like I ever played a role in it. So I don't really feel like me being the white guy ever really benefited my situation or harmed my situation. It's just kind of, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> So that intro really came like from when we were shooting the Exposing Me video. We had like, they were having a conversation about me. They're like, oh, which cameraman is this? He's like, he, he was talking about I shot Little Chris's video. And they were like, oh yeah, which ones? And then he's like, they're like, oh yeah, that one's nice. And he was like, yeah, you should know he's raw. He's a fucking white boy. So it was like, I was just recording like a B-roll scene during that conversation. And then like when I was editing, I heard that part and I just threw it in originally for that video the exposing me one and then like it got such a crazy response and people started asking me like will you put that before my video we wanted that and like so I just kind of left it in for the time being <laughs> Um, I mean, my relationship with FBG Duck is, I've, I've been doing a lot of work with him um, as of lately, him, Young, Dutchy, ever really since the Exposing Me video. Um, I really met Duck because I shot a video with him and Little Chris, and because uh, I was working with Little Chris for a long time, and then we just started doing more and more work, and then it's, yeah, it's just, every, the numbers have been crazy, everything's been moving well, so, I mean, it's been a good experience. Yeah, we barely shot any of the videos. Oh, you we just still started? Got a lot more to shoot, yeah. So we still gotta like we still gotta do a scene on the stairs. Um stuff like that. We just got like two performances to be real. You finna show it all night? Yeah. You finna show it all night? 
man, a couple hours, you know. Wow. I was out all last night. I like, got super drunk. I didn't even do anything all day today because I was so drunk. <laughs> You know, obviously it's like things like that came to my head, especially after exposing me and um, all that. But I can't really say that like the people I worked with, I don't feel like it, it would stop me from working with anybody who is on the other side. And really, I don't associate myself with anything that's street wise. I really would work with anybody as long as they just respect the work. You know, um, I just want to I'm not really that's not that's not what i'm here for i'm really here for the music and that's it so i don't associate myself with that and i <clears throat> i would hope and i respect the fact that people don't associate me with that it's a part on it you did some shaking shit or something you did some shaking shit with the I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a hard type of relationship because on one end you do have people who are abusing their power, but then on the other end you have a group of people that without those people don't have any control. So I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like there's, there's ups and downs and things that are, are being put in place. Like there's more, there's more police. So of course there's going to be more incidents of police brutality and these negative things happening um also to what i see a lot of in chicago at least is it feels like they're they're really heavily recruiting for sh cpd and so i feel like a lot of police officers are coming in and are inexperienced and they don't really know how to deal with people and also too but also too at the same time people are not dealing with police officers in the right way they're being um extremely confrontational and kind of <clears throat> not benefiting the situation so that's how I feel about it I mean I feel like it's appropriate and I definitely feel like it's appropriate in certain certain situations to say fuck 12 because it's cool. yeah it's cool I mean if you're gonna I don't know it's cool to, like in certain situations yeah they fuck up a lot of stuff like in that situation where I got where my video shoot got shot up um, essentially is like fuck 12 because why would they make us leave someone's front yard to go to a park where they know the area isn't necessarily safe and then kind of make us feel like we had a safe haven but not so um, I mean I feel like there's certain situations where they <clears throat> benefit people and in certain situations where they harm people like definitely when you get a parking ticket or some dumb shit like that fuck 12. I mean I really want to try to um phase having guns in my videos out unless it's used for like a cinematic sequence but um I mean when they're pointed at me I just make sure all of them are taken out the head and that people don't put their finger on the trigger and I mean I haven't really had any problems with that so I'm 
I mean, I just kind of stick to what I do, and I have, a lot of people have been respectful about it. And a lot of people in the beginning don't even point loaded guns at you, so. I think it doesn't really serve a purpose a lot of times. I think it, it makes people look tough, and I feel like it's for show a lot. Do um, you think that's work for the... Yeah, it's basically like, it's like a look what we got and we got more than you and like a scare tactic in some sense. And then also in another sense, it's like, I don't know, it's something that they're, it's, it's what they're rapping about. It has to do with the artistry sometimes, but do I think it's overused? Yeah, I think, I think things need to, yeah, I think that's. I think it's kind of like dry snitching on yourself too, in a sense. I mean, I guess it's up to you. Like, of course, it's up to you if you want to put it in the video. Um, but yeah, it's really like, it's not. I feel like it's negative attention, sometimes. I mean, to be honest about mass shootings, I'm surprised that they don't happen more often. Um, with the amount of firearms that are actually available to the public and that the public already has so um as far as that i mean it's it's kind of it's definitely scary it's something you always think about like when you go to like you go to walmart you go to a mall you go to anywhere like you really could potentially be in the middle of a of a mass shooting and it's something that you can't really defend against um Yeah, I think people sh should be able to have guns. I think, I mean, it's a constitutional right, and there's already so many guns that the citizens have that it's impossible to ever regulate it how it is. But I think to obtain a new firearm, I think people should have to go through, like, a process where they have to get letters of recommendation and stuff. I mean, sh Illinois is very strict on their gun laws where you have to get a FOID card, you have to go through a background check and stuff. But in other states, as soon as you turn 21, like in Indiana, I've heard you're able to go grab a firearm. So I think that all throughout the states, they need to have, like, a, a stricter gun law all around and regulate them a little bit harder. And then, yeah. I feel like he didn't. I feel like he didn't. And I think, <clears throat> yeah, I feel like it's it's a lot of things that went against him to like ruin his career. And he kind of held out and really showed how he can be successful. And um, yeah, I definitely, I don't, I mean, if his name wasn't on the paperwork and it got released in his public record, he didn't, I mean, it's just, it's, he didn't snitch. Go to tryexposed.com for twenty nine ninety five per month. You'll get a full yeah. skin care with daytime yeah. and overnight clear horse hair. Yeah. 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 Where's the first house in that bit? Pull that thing out. Yeah. Yeah. One time is it? It's a lemon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can do it though, we don't fuck it. Yeah. 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 My top three directors from Chicago. Um, you know, I always, I really, I like exclusive. Um, that's one of my one of my homies, huh? Exclusive seven seven three. Yeah, exclusive seven seven three. Or no, 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 no. Exclusive. Um, I don't know if it's a, 
no exclusive is like with a Q. He's from uh, Gary, Indiana. He shoots a lot of videos in sh like the South Side of Chicago and like East Chicago and stuff like that. He's got um, a really nice style. Um, I also like Dada Dada Creative Max. Um, he's got some dope videos. Um, and then uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know who I could put third. It just, yeah. <laughs> just leave it at two. <laughs> two, I mean, who else? You know, I mean, of course. I'm trying to think of who. Sh I seen some raw person, some person who had some dope shit, but I forgot who it was. And I'm trying to think, like. Come back to that question. Come back to that question. Um, you know, it feels, it feels good. I feel like a uh, survivor man and Bear grills and stuff like, <laughs> no, I'm, it's hard out here. I'm in a fucking war. <laughs> no, um, I don't feel like I had to risk my life to survive. I, I take precautions to make sure that I don't have to risk my life and that, and I feel like a lot of people respect my safety and keep me safe and if you don't keep me safe i'm not gonna work with you um i mean i just grew up in the suburbs and now i live in chicago um i really just i don't know to go to new york or la i feel like i'd be restarting my clientele base and i feel like we have a strong um we have a, like one thing about Chicago is we're constantly in the news. Like we're constantly all over going viral on all sorts of stuff. So it's like, what I notice about that is it's also a good place to be as far as gaining popularity and stuff like that. Um, it's a big market and there's a lot of artists in Chicago. I have a nice client base and yeah, I just like Chicago. LA is cool. It's like, then again, I like to travel to to shoot too so it's like I'm not really discriminatory of where it is but I live in Chicago yeah every time I go out of town all I hear is Chicago all they do is kill people there Chirac yeah. oh my gosh it, it's bad there do you hear gunshots and it's like yeah but it's like Chicago is bad and like as far as like the cities that I've been to I haven't really seen like the bad parts like how i've seen the bad parts of chicago so chicago does seem a little bit more dangerous than cities that i've been to but as far as like people's opinion of it they feel like if you land get off the plane walk far you're going to be in a, in a danger zone but it's like we have the nicest downtown we have a, a lot of nice stuff in chicago beautiful neighborhoods obama lives in chicago and so people really misunderstand it and we have the best food so that's one thing I notice when I go to LA, I feel like I starve. Well, I mean, people don't take it seriously, and it's like one thing about Chicago is like when people, people get killed. It yeah, it feels like yeah they don't take it seriously till it hits home, and it's like it's kind of sick at the same time. Like people will talk about I'm smoking your dead homie or fuck your homie he dead, and it's like it's really kind of kind of crazy that like it comes to that and then it's like it becomes so regular too and then <clears throat> at the same time people will be like oh there was a sh man you got shot at over there no duh and make laughs or like laugh about bad areas i don't know it's just like there's so many dark jokes that go along with yeah. chicago and it's like we are it's almost like like it's so much pain from that shit that like people don't people don't take it seriously because it hurts so much. So they try to make a joke of it to kind of ignore it. That's kind of how I feel sometimes. Or like, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's really like, it's crazy like that, that people you shoot videos for, or like even people that were try like, like one person was trying to book me for a shoot. <clears throat> And then literally that day that he was like, he was telling me to come pick up a deposit from him and stuff. 
he got killed. So it was like, it's just crazy how like, it's crazy how, how frequently and how close it is all the time sometimes. But yeah, it's like what, 70 people get shot in a weekend. It's fucked up. Yeah, it, it is very like provoking a lot of times, like rap music, it's very provoking and you see in historically throughout the whole history, throughout from the beginning of rap music, you see a lot of violence associated with it and you see a lot of <clears throat> gang related, I don't know how to answer that question, like basically do i think <clears throat> basically like association will have you end up in a bad position i don't know i don't know how to answer this question <laughs> I mean, my goal for the next five years, um, I don't only shoot music videos, I shoot commercials and stuff too. So I want to take that to kind of a bigger level as well. And I want to, as, as far as the music videos go, I want to, um, I obviously want to start working with bigger artists um, more frequently. I want to get bigger budget productions. And I really want to start like, I want to start worrying more about like my my creative um, content and stuff rather than like just creating content strictly for views and stuff. So I want to focus more on like my own art and my own projects and take more pride in that and stuff. So. Yeah, shout out Shibuya Tyson, DJ Ken and J Audio for the interview, um, my boys. Oh yeah, we shot the um, feisty video, so I don't know if it'll be out before or after this comes out, but yeah, definitely be on the lookout. That's a that's a nice song, a nice little visual is gonna come out for it, and then definitely down the line with Ruga, you're gonna see more and more um, bigger projects from us and stuff like that. So, you gonna ask questions? You gonna ask in like three minutes? Only three minutes. Say, where we going to Vegas? <laughs> Where are we going to Vegas? Um, yeah, so we're gonna uh, travel all over the place. That's my that's my favorite thing to do. Hopefully, you know, I haven't shot a video out of the country yet, but hopefully, like this year, maybe I could shoot a video outside of this country. So that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs>